Kalispera, Kalimera, I did it the other way around today. Uh, whatever time you're watching, this is Mappa. I'm still. I've got Thasso here. And as you can see, the gentleman below us, well, future Cyprus number one, Gabriel Ortelli. Hello, Kile. How are you doing? Oh, good. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, good to good to finally have you on this pod, mate. Um, it's thank it's you. an absolute pleasure. I think we're going to be talking to a future number one for the national team. So, you know, Hopefully. we're the first to do things. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, um, I didn't ask you off, off camera. Have you ever done podcasts before or anything like this? Um, no, I've never done a podcast. I've done, I've done a few interviews, but I guess it's, it's slightly different to a podcast. So, no, I've never done a podcast now. Okay. Well, you, you seem all right in front of the camera. That's why I'm still getting used to it. <laughs> So, <laughs> that's not Greek, by the way. <laughs> I think that's just being hanging around with his child too much. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that I think that's what it is. Yeah. I'm joking, Billy. We will pick up things with my children anyway. So, before we talk about Cyprus and the national team, tell us a bit about your background, please, mate. Yeah, so I kind of I grew up, um. North London as well, and I'm actually similar to you, um, live in Winchmore Hill, um, so kind of just, yeah, t top of North London, um, and I can't, well, yeah. Well, wait, hold always... on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, you live in Winchmore Hill, did you go to Winchmore yeah. School? No, I didn't, I didn't go to Winchmore, no. My, um, I have a lot of friends that go there, I've never been to Winchmore, no, I haven't gone, gone to Winchmore, it's literally just there. around the corner though. Oh, really? Go there. Yeah, 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 yeah it's literally have have just around the corner, yeah. <laughs> sorry continue sorry no it's fine um but yeah no so I've, i kind of grew up in, in in north london so i'm kind of surrounded by a lot of greek cypriots um you know like, like myself um and um and yes yeah, so i kind of always always played football from a young age and kind of um been kind of brought up with it through, through my dad and through through various different family members and i guess it's kind of stuck stuck with me and um and yeah so your dad is from italy yeah. Or is he Sicilian? Because obviously I don't want to get that mixed up if that is the case. I'm yeah, no, no, he's Italian. Italian. So he's he's yeah. from um he's from so him and his family are kind of from um like uh, Lake Como. So north 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 of uh, Italy, a couple a few miles, well not a few, you know, a decent amount from um Milan, so kind of that that way. Yeah, so my yeah, so my mum um she's too she so she was born here and then both her parents were from um so my her, my my bad Paul was from uh, Galafasos, and then uh, my Yael was from Dochni, which is the neighbouring neighbouring village. Um, so and they moved here, um, like the the fifty forties fifties, um, and um, and yeah. So my my mum and uh, her sisters have kind of yeah been brought up in North London, but they're kind of they're fully fully Greek themselves. Right, and I assume that with you having. Cypriot, Greek Cypriot, and Italian families. It's a huge family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so I see most of my my uh, Cypriot family live obviously in Cyprus and here. I kind of see most of my Cypriot family. They live in North London as well, uh, and then but then most of my Italian family live in Italy. So I kind of I see I don't see them as much, um, but um, but I, I'm I'm reasonably close to them as well. So in terms of the language, do you speak both languages? No, I don't. See, that's so. I kind of I went to Greek school in um, East Barnet, um, again just down the road, um, probably for about a year and a half. And then because of my football, and it started to get a bit more serious. Obviously, I had to had to leave. And obviously, you know, there's certain priorities that that came with that, and certain sacrifices. So I kind of never got the chance to to to, to fully learn. It. You know, I know I know you know um, drips and dabs, but I kind of don't. You know, not not fluent. I, my mum's fluent and kind of kind of as growing up, she spoke to me, and then obviously, I guess. As time goes, you slowly lose it. Um, so same as Italian, really. I kind of that's. I think with more time in the future, I definitely want to, um, you know, get fluent in, in both of them. Well, the good thing is they're both both very similar in terms of how the vocabulary is and, and the grammar. Mm. And I don't think it's I don't think it's too late. It's ever too late to learn new mm. languages. Yeah. Um, you know. I, when I was at secondary school, I did French and German. And all the, even though I've got my GCSEs, my French is diabolical, as Thassel will tell you. But my oh, yeah. German is, yeah, is, it's is terrible. Good. My, my German is better <laughs> than my Greek, though. That's the thing. My German is better oh, than my wow. Greek. But, yeah, it's, it's a wild one. But, listen, at the end of the day, you know, you're still young. You're, what, 16, 17 years old, if that. Um, yep. And I don't think it will be that, that much of an issue. The, the thing is, I don't know about you, Thassel, but we, we, we get called Charlies in, in Cyprus. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 the Charlies. So if you, if have, you, have you had that? 
Have you, have you had the? No, I haven't. Have I haven't. I've been I've been shielded by my my parents. I have been. <laughs> oh no, that's great. That's great yeah. because uh, the the Charlie and being called the Charlie, especially at an early age, like we really got in me, like as a as an insult. So you know, did, did good we ever figure out where me. it came from though? Did we ever figure out where it, that name it came was, from? It was one guy, it was one guy, uh, one uh, English Cypriot went over called Giriago. Uh, <laughs> and then he said, Yeah, they call me Charlie uh, in England. And that was it. And it stuck. Oh, wow. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's one of those things. The, the, you know, some guy from Aradipo went to Aradipo, called himself Charlie, and it stuck with everybody. I thought it was because oh, wow. they used to watch Charlie Chaplin and they, they thought that, you know, all the. No, nah, man. Nah, man, that, that would be nice, wouldn't it? It would be nice. Wow. But no. Nah, I nah. need to find out. I need to nah. find out. But One guy. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> anyway. Blame him. Blame him. Anyway. You, um, you're, as we said, you're at Watford right now, and you said you made the sacrifices. How long have you been at Watford? Um, so I started off in the academy um, in, uh, so I first got my first kind of contract was, um, 2019 like the the kind of January 2019 and I was on trial in the you know the Christmas of, of, of 2018 um and so yeah so that this would be my fifth fifth season I think fourth fifth fifth season um and then yeah and then got, got offered my scholar um about a year and a half ago um and, and yeah so I, I guess kind of each each year you go past is kind of new contracts you're, you're trying to earn and it, it can be quite ruthless at times as I've seen like some of my, mate, my mates go and um, you know, new boys to come in, but um, you know, l- luckily for me, I've, I've kind of I've, I've stayed in the position I am um, for now, and I guess it's just kind of trying to maintain that and trying to you know get the next contract. Absolutely. And did they scout you? Were you playing for a local team at the time, or did you go for trials? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was um, I played for the um, Barnet District um, for literally it was literally my first game of the season, so it was kind of quite a big thing playing for them. And I was playing against um, Brent, so the the, the, the district of Brent and then um and then yeah like a, a scout kind of just approached my dad and just said um you know, I'm a scout for Watford um you know can you would you like to come down for a trial and and yeah but it was about it was quite lengthy it was about probably about two months the trial um because I think it's quite I guess it's quite a big investment in terms of like um you know when you're at the academy there's a lot you know there's quite a lot of money that the club are putting into you um so yeah it took about two months and they they eventually signed me so it was like that was my first kind of taste um of, of academy football and before that it was yeah all grassroots um you know playing for local club playing for Winchmore Hill um playing for for Norseman as well in Ed, in Edmonton so all local clubs grassroots so it's quite a big step and and um you see a lot of boys that do first come from grassroots to to academy football it's quite a big yeah it's quite a big gap um but then obviously you know luckily I've been there for four or five years now and kind of that slowly has faded away and I think it must give you a lot of hope when you do see Many players, especially in the Premier League, like your Eze's and Elise's, starting mm. at grassroots and then making it yeah. to the Premier League at such a young age. That's that's got to yeah. you with some confidence, right? Yeah, hundred percent. No, I think I think it's it's definitely underrated grassroots because it, it teaches you something that academy football can't in terms of that 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 grit and that actual the love for the game. Um, you know, I have yeah, I have a, a lot a lot of to them more. There's more opportunities coming from grassroots than ever before. Um, it's just sometimes in terms of the luck for those opportunities. There's so many great players out there playing grassroots. It's just, it's just, you know, sometimes they just unfortunately don't get the look in or don't get the opportunity to go on trials and things like that. But obviously, luckily for me, I, I was um I was able to get that opportunity. Do you feel under more pressure to succeed than say your teammates? Because let's say, for example, you've got a right back, and I've heard many stories where right backs might one right back might have been a striker when he was at you know youth mm-hmm. level. And then you're stuck at right back for one game and the other game of his life, and that's where it, yeah, where it yeah. stayed. Where you're a goalkeeper, and effectively, there's only one position for a goalkeeper. You can't mm. play centre back or, or, yeah. or, or right wing. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, no. I, I do, it's a good point. I think being a goalkeeper, it's it's kind of like that. You're either the the hero or or you're the villain. It's kind of there's no rule in between. You you have an amazing game, and yeah, you save a penalty, and you're you're a hero. You you make one mistake, and there's no one protecting you behind because you're the last kind of line of defence. So it's yeah, it's I see what you mean. It's yeah, it's definitely there's definitely more pressure, I'd say, um, because you have to to stand out. Although there's obviously less goalkeepers in terms of, like you know, g- generally speaking, I think there's you know there's only one spot, and I think me playing 
you know, I'm sure you talk about with with my FA Youth Cup and things like that. That's like I think now's the the moment where kind of there was a proper number one. There's you know the best goalkeeper starts, and, and I think I was lucky enough to be given the opportunity to play there. And and I guess it kind of in the run up to these big you know the big games like the the FA Youth Cup, which is like, which is the pinnacle. It's yeah, you do feel the pressure. So were you always a goalkeeper? Yeah, I've always played goalkeeper. I've um, I have I have a, yeah, an older sibling, and he just from a young age just stuck me in goal, <laughs> taking <laughs> blasting shots, from, yeah, from five yards away. Um, and yeah, it just developed from there. I, I think my um, my my first um, kind of pair of gloves were the the, the same ones as um, Buffon. So I had, I had them from like from a young age. Um, the and then um, and then yeah, my f- first kind of shirt was a a Pepe Reina shirt. On the, you can see it. On nice. The there. Okay. Nice. So um, so yeah. So I've I've always been yeah, kind of fascinated with the the position of a goalkeeper, and I guess over time you you kind of fall in love even more. There've been some great Italian goalkeepers over the years, man. I mean, you mentioned Buffon, you had Zenga back yeah. in my day, Pagliuca. The, the list goes yeah. on. So I guess that, yeah, that the, must the, be a bit. The, but, the, but the Italian goalkeepers are, are definitely they're, 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 they're the passion. I love it, and I, I feel like for me, I don't know if it's I have that bit of Italian in me, but I, I feel like as soon as I step onto the football pitch, I have this kind of arrogance about me that off the pitch I, I take away, and you know I like to be humble, but then on the pitch, it's I kind of have a persona about me that a lot of people don't really recognise me. I have like an alter ego, um, and you know you see a lot of those. Yeah, Ital- the Italian goalkeepers are very good at that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, look, I've, again, I've spoken to so many uh, pro players and they say once they cross that white line, it, it, it turns to a different dimension. It's like they turn into yeah. animals. It, like they flick a yeah. switch and that's it. Yeah, 100%. It's, it's beast mode, you know? Yeah. I think uh, I think you kind of need that a bit more with you, when you're a goalkeeper as well, don't you, to yeah. kind of almost have a command of that of, mm. of that front four or five the players in front of yeah. you, don't you? 100%, yeah. Is is it get, are the rule changes going to make it difficult for you next season? Because I know they can't goalkeepers can't put off strikers when they're taking penalties anymore. So like people like Emmy Martinez can't be mm. smacking the crossbar and that kind of stuff. Yeah. He'll, he'll, find, he'll find he'll find something else find to way, do. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I think there's yeah, I think it's pretty same as me. I kind of again I like to to be a bit yeah a bit mischievous when I'm when on the pitch. And as to yeah to like Martinez or Ramsdale, I, I, I like to. To, to look up to, or although I don't like him at Pickford as well, in terms of that, you know, everyone hates him on the pitch, but he gets into other people's heads, which I think is really important. Um, I mean, yeah, in terms of penalty, it doesn't really affect me too, yeah, too much. I think it's that there's, I, I would say I'm kind of more in the middle. Like, I don't, it's not like I don't do anything, but I'm not, I don't take it to the, the extreme either. So, um, so, yeah. The thing is, over the years, the goalkeeper's role has changed. It isn't mm. just about keeping the ball at the back of the net now. You need to have command of your area. You need to be able to distribute the ball, whether it be right foot, left foot. A lot of teams like to play from the back. Is this something that you guys are being taught at Watford uh, as goalkeepers? Yeah, no, hundred percent. I think, I think from definitely under kind of the so when you're at so the the schoolboy program, which is under sixteen and below to like under nines. That that's yeah, that's when they kind of really kind of um, you know drill it into you about playing out because. Is, it's a really good skill to have. So I think at Watford especially, they, they're they keen on, um, you know, being comfortable with the ball at your feet. And that's something that I struggled with first joining the academy because grassroots would just lob it as far as you can um, up the pitch. Um, whereas kind of, yeah, as, as I got kind of a bit older, um, I kind of knew the importance of being able to play and use your left and right foot and things like that. So, yeah, it's definitely something they've, they've integrated. Now, I kind of, that's probably one of my, my strengths kind of in terms of playing out and, and uh, distributing the ball and, and kind of having the ball at my feet. Um, and I guess kind of, they, they don't want us to be fixated on it. They don't want us to be like, oh, play, 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 because at the end of the day, it's about keeping the ball out the back of the net. So if it's just putting the ball in row Z, it's better than them scoring a goal and, and kind of, um, you know, messing about with it in the box. But, um, but, you know, it's definitely something they've taught us, especially the younger age groups. But as you get older, it's more about winning, and whether that's playing out or whether that's going wrong. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a goalkeeper that, well, I say recently left for Watford. There's a couple, I think it was a year ago. It was a Ben Foster. He was mm. at Watford, I, I believe, last year or the year before. I can't remember before he went yeah. to Wrexham. Yeah, well, yeah. So he retired and then he went to Wrexham. Yeah, Wrexham, um, yeah. As, did, did you encounter him at any point at the club? Um, yeah, I, I saw him kind of around the training ground. I did. I never because so that was before I was um, I was full time. So I, I was kind of still at school at that point. But you know, some of the the older goalkeepers trained with him, and just I think that the the kind of the persona that you get off him is he's just a really nice guy. He's a really nice guy. It's, you see, you. Know, on camera that that seem um 
you know nice than they are in person but he was just nice guy that was just trying to just trying to help um so i think having goalkeepers even the the goalkeepers that the first and goalkeepers now at Watford they I think the the more experienced they are the the, the better they help you because I think it's kind of at the end of the day it's 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 all about experience you know, the more the more games you play the better you're going to be it's as simple as that so having yeah. I think having been there um especially for the, the goalkeepers um the younger goalkeepers is definitely you know a big a big um benefit oh, for sure and the thing is that was leading on to my next question which you you kind of answered but in terms of <laughs> the influence that first team goalkeepers have on the youngsters, do they integrate with guys and give you guys advice on things you can change or improve? Yeah, you know, hundred percent. I think so. The the first team goalkeepers that I've been with, with Dan Backman, who's he's, so he's the um, Austrian national goalkeeper. So he's been, he's been, he's playing the Euros. He's played at really, you know, really high level. And then you have um, Ben Hamer, who, who played, won the Premier League with Leicester, played a few Premier League games, um, and um, played at Swansea in the Championship. So, you know, there's some really good goalkeepers there. And I think they they all experience. Dan Backman, um, the first team keeper now, he this is really his kind of first breakthrough season and he's 28. So it really kind of shows how, as a goalkeeper, your your career starts much later. You have, you know, you have the old goalkeepers like, like Ramsdale, but even him, you know, 24, 25. Um, so there, there are some goalkeepers that start later than others. But, um, but no, they, they've been really helpful. It's kind of... I've been lucky enough to to train with them, you know, a handful of times, and each time they always give you that little bit of information that you need to take on board for the next session or the next game or whatever it may be. And things I know it's an obvious statement to make, but playing for a grassroots team and playing for Watford, there's a massive gap in terms mm. of quality yeah. and experience that you're learning from one to the other. Now, that's not to say that your experience at grassroots level wasn't important, because clearly, clearly it was in terms of your development and also getting down to the nitty-gritty, so to speak, because it can be a bit grimy down there, do you know what I mean? But in terms of playing for Watford, what does that mean for you when you put on that shirt? Yeah, it's, it's, I think playing for any professional club, any like academy where the, the standards are so high and I guess the, the, the limelight's always on you, whether, whether you're like, you know, you're a 10-year-old representing the badger, whether you're, you're a 25-year-old representing the badger, it's quite, it's, it's a big thing. I think, I've been, like I said, I've been really lucky to, to go from grassroots up until... Uh, up and you know playing for Watford, you know a professional club. So I think no, it, it means a lot. I think, like I said, with my family and stuff, um, you know how much they've they've helped sacrifice for me. And, you know taking me um, to training is it's too far. It's in um, St Albans. It's not it's not too far, but I think you know literally four or five times a week, my my parents, mum or dad drive me there. So I think I think for for that, I think I kind of want to you know there's a lot I want to give back to my family, and and I think the best way to do that is is you know making it as far as I can. Uh, the club. But look, St Albans might not be a million miles away from Winchmore Hill, but the London traffic, the, yeah, not yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it's journey can end up being an hour or two hours. Yeah, so, 100%. Yeah. yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, Thassa, you got any questions, mate? Well, um, I've, I've kind of, I've loaded up the uh, getting to know Gabriel Ortelli uh, okay. article there. So well, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe because it was six months ago, maybe we can see if there's any differences to the yeah, questions yeah, yeah. that you answered there. So, <laughs> so for instance, yeah, I'm going to try to catch him out. So, uh, <laughs> somebody asked you your most talented teammates. Um, yeah, I remember I said, I said Michael um, Arupoku. He's, um, he's, he's since two fair, that was before he's kind of, so he's played in the, the FA Cup now uh, and he's played, um, made his championship professional debut so so i think that that's that's definitely a that's age age well in in a, in a good way um so um so you know he's yeah he's he's, he's a great player there, there's some there's some really talented players we the um the england squad um the under 18 just got announced today and um we have a uh, jonathan um mccauley who's a uh, he's a year above me he's playing for, he's for england now and um adrian blake as well he's probably another talented teammate as well uh both in england so there's, there's some really really strong players and unfortunately a lot of the strong players have gone to, to other clubs as well like um palace and chelsea and brighton so, so a lot of top uh, top um clubs have taken some of the players but yeah there's some it's a really good i think i think the thing about the watford academy is it, it produces so many good players it, whether or not they stay at, at watford or not they there's a lot of players that go on to have you know great careers no that's 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 great i mean uh, get, get game scouting as well you know on top of everything else, getting yeah. scouting, you, you, you seem to know your players. Obviously, obviously, yeah. <laughs> uh, Adupoku making his making his debut following following yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. 
So um, I'm guessing your favourite football memories probably changed since uh, s- since this came out. So yeah, yeah, update. yeah. Because so this I had that interview right at the start of the season, so that, that yeah, that's definitely changed. I would definitely say now probably the although although we lost probably the game against Arsenal in the in the in the Youth Cup FA Youth Cup. Um, there was like was it probably about th- over three thousand fans there, about three thousand fans there. You know, family, uh, friends, all there, and um, I think I kind of so we yeah two nil up and we we bottled it in the in the second half, ended up losing losing four two. But um, it was um, probably yeah strangely although we lost, it was probably one of my kind of proudest moments playing against that. You know, a lot of the some of the best one of the best academies in Europe um, with with Arsenal um, who went on to to get to the final. But um, yeah, pretty playing in that, playing in the FA Youth Cup as a whole, I think definitely one of my my best um, memories. Yeah, I mean it's uh, it's a competition that kind of makes a lot of players, especially mm. uh, especially in, in you know standout ways. There's a few there's a few players. Yeah. For I support Aston Villa, so we kind of keep an eye on that because uh, mm. the academy at Villa is also yeah. very very yeah, strong. Very good. Yeah, so that so that's 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 really good that. Um, so, I'm guessing the best advice you received is probably the same. We talked about Ben Foster, so I'm guessing, I'm guessing the yeah, advice from yeah. Ben Foster still counts. Yeah, pretty much. I think because I think that? as a goalkeeper, like like I said before to Stel, I think I think making making there's so many mistakes that happen with with goalkeepers. It's like it's inevitable whether whether or not you're the best or or, or worst goalkeeper, you're going to make mistakes. So I think that the, that advice of kind of um, I'm pretty sure yeah something about you know making mistakes how it's just part of the game and kind of just about moving on taking it with a pinch of salt and like I said the more you play the more experience you get the more you kind of blur out those mistakes and you're able to build from it and, and not not dwell on them uh, to be fair to Ben that's actually pretty good life advice as well yeah <laughs> yeah it yeah, it's true. yeah so, uh, um so I, I'm guessing uh so how's the a level going obviously yeah so I'm kind of history so yeah, history level. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I'm kind of doing that on top of my my football. And there's um so the, the edu- so as a scholar, it's compulsory uh, with all, all um you know players between sixteen and eighteen to to do the, the education as well. And so I've kind of the compulsory bit is the um you do like a B Tech and sport, which is the equivalent of two A levels um, that every every player kind of you have to do. Um, no matter what club, wherever you are, it's, it's, it's kind of compulsory by the Premier League. Uh, and then the, um, I kind of chose and the club have been really kind of helpful helpful with supporting me and do my yeah history A level, um, which um, which I've kind of half, we're halfway through now, so I'm, I'm off from it now. But um, it's hard work. Usually I do about, it's about four or five hours um, a week, just a, a one-on-one tutor. So I'm kind of able to learn a bit quicker, but um, but yeah, the club have been really, they're kind of really big on education and things like that. And when I asked, you know, can I do that? They were, they were, they gave me their full support. Yeah. So uh, obviously we're in June now. Have you, have you done your exam already for it or are you still preparing? So I have, so um, I, ha- I did like my kind of um, end of year kind of mocks and things like that, but yeah, the actual yeah. A level exam for me, cause I'm, um, um i'll be in the equivalent of year 12 this year is i'm doing yeah. it so i'll do that i'll do that next year right okay got you got you i feel so old i feel so old listening to this guy man. <laughs> well, well, well when you're still on o levels when you're in oh year, man like, you just say, i'm gonna be in year 12 i'm like jesus i remember doing my, my you know being uh, sick form yeah oh, God, that was in yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight, <laughs> <laughs> no comment no 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 no, it's fine so um i mean got the last one here i thought i thought it's a very very interesting one that watford uh, will pull out Mm. i think we're going to use it on some of the other player interviews that we've got you've got your 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 uh your fifa ratings yeah do you you, Um, you remember the the values you put for yourself Probably not exactly. I remember. I think overall was eighty four. I'm pretty sure. Um, or eighty five. Eighty four. Eighty five. Eighty five. Yeah, eighty yeah, five. Um, um, I think. I think probably in terms of the strengths, have probably stayed the same in terms of like the the best ones. I think. Um, like re- things like reflexes and and kicking yeah. are probably, um, yeah. probably one of my top my top ones. Um, my strength, like I said, I think like we said before, playing academy football is so is so. Um, important how good you are with your feet and things like that and, mm-hmm. and it's something they drill into us like even being off season now 
um you know being going to the gym and doing runs and you know even things like working on distribution that's kind of a hunt yeah. on any anything like that because that's something that comes naturally but things like yeah kicking distribution is something you still work on because that's like locker than then you're sorted goalkeeping wise you've mentioned Reina, you've mentioned Buffon. have you got um have you got any other uh any other people that you uh, kind of want to you base yourself on mm. um probably i'd say in terms of um, the modern way of playing probably like someone like Manuel Neuer or kind of uh, Alison Becker or kind of Edison mm. but that kind of sweeper keeper i think so i kind of i've i've kind of um you know brought it down a level a bit before i was too high i was like literally playing like a, a center back um effectively at times and sometimes you get caught out but like i said the, the play the more i've kind of realized kind of you know to you know where the, the starting position to be but it's so important i think especially with my with with, with watford we play such a high line it's really important you have a mm. goalkeeper behind to back up otherwise you know there's going to be players going one on one all the time and, and i kind of you know it's easier to to you know clear the ball higher up the pitch than make a save in your box or anything like that so um so yeah probably those goalkeepers who kind of um probably one of the yeah probably the three best at doing that with Neuer, edison and, and allison I'm, I'm glad you mentioned allison you know his brother is a goalkeeper yeah and do you know where he plays um i know he played in um was it brazil at, at one point but yeah. now he's at he's in is he in Cy is he, does he play for, for he's in Cyprus. Now? yeah yeah, yeah. He's far yeah. Ahead. Yeah, Muriel. Was it Muriel? Muriel That's the one. Uh, yeah. There you go. So, do, do you do you um, keep an eye on the Cypriot League? Is that something that you have some interest in, or when you have got spare time, anything like that? Well, when I, when I go um, to Cyprus, it's usually kind of like you can't really miss it. I mean, you know, the, the Cypriots, you know, the big football fans. I think when I'm here, I don't not not really. I think you see, I see obviously with the the European competitions with the Aglanak and and. Um, uh, you know, with with Ham and things like that, but I don't know. I don't necessarily follow the the football league. I think we um, I've my so my uh, in Galatasaray we have a funny enough. It's like a, a family friend. Um, we have um, um Dimitris um Stiliandis, who's uh he's uh the th like third or fourth goalkeeper at, at, at Ajax Larnaca. Um, and um, and we kind of every time when I go with my family to to Cyprus, he'd be he'd be playing in the uh, the football pitch, and we'd see him there and. And um, you know now, funnily enough, we're both both goalkeepers playing at professional clubs. And it's, I saw he, uh, yeah, he's in the he was in the squad for the uh, the um, the Europe the the um, Conference League game with uh, with West Ham. Um, was it Conference? Was it Europa League or Conference? No, no, it was a Conference League. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Conference yeah. League. Yeah, yeah. So, so I saw he was in he was in the squad for that. Oh, he's got the ice cream van and everything. Ice cream van over there. <laughs> That's it. That's like North London, mate. You know you're in North London when you hear that. It's a Mr. Whippy. Yeah, yeah. It's a Mr. Whippy, yeah? Yeah, yeah. You can see over there. Is it the blue van or the pink van? Pink. It's a pink yeah. van. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know North London. That's how you know. <laughs> Joe, I, 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 I got a little bit offended with your answer, by the way, because you, I was expecting you to say, I don't really follow a separate football match, but... If it weren't for your podcast, I wouldn't know as much as I do know about it. You've hurt my feelings, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true, though. It's true. I've been on joking, Instagram. I've been able to, I have been able to keep up there more, 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 more than I have. But um, I think like it, help, it helps because um, I think in terms of the the Cypher League, when you when you go there, like I said, it's hard to it's hard to escape. You know, yeah. football football is such a big part um, in, in Cyprus. So it's kind of it's nice when you go there. It's like you see a different a different side to football and and um, and things like that. And like I said, even in Galatasaray, it's a massive football pitch there as well, which is, you know, it's a beautiful pitch. It's still considering it's like when I go what, 30, 30 to 40 degrees, it's still good condition. So it shows that, you know, football in Cyprus is, is such a big thing. And so it's nice to kind of be yeah. part of it. And I guess the times where you go on holiday is probably similar to us when we were kids. When you know, whenever we went on, on holiday to Cyprus, it was during the summer. So the season was over. So you realize mm. if you got yeah. the opportunity to, to watch any games when you're out there. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So, well, look, speaking of Cyprus, I've got, I've got to ask the, the questions because, you know, Thassa, I know Thassa wants to ask, I want to ask, but have you decided which national team you want to represent? Because obviously you've got Italy, you've got Cyprus and you've got England. Mm. Um, I mean, at, at the moment, like I said, so I'm going to Cyprus tomorrow for to get my separate passport. So I think at the, at the moment I'm leaning to, yeah, playing towards Cyprus. Like I said, I fall... When when people ask, you know, where I'm from, my identity, I, I think, despite my surname obviously being very Italian, 
Um, and uh, I kind of, I, I, I definitely embrace both my Cyprian and Italianness, but I feel like Cyprus, in terms of going there every single summer for God, since I was yeah a, a child, um, I think it is something you know I embrace and I feel that's part of my identity more than anything else. So yeah, now at the moment, yes, definitely Cyprus, and I think we we contacted them and um, um, kind of they've kind of got back to us and things like that. And it's just yeah, just about kind of being able to do it you know legally. So just actually getting my my passport. So literally, the the main reason for the trip to go to Cyprus, apart from seeing family and things like that, is is to try and get my my Cyprus uh, kind of ID card and passport sorted uh, sorted out. So uh, when you say you spoke to them, you mean what the Cypriot FA? Have you you been in contact yeah. with them? Yeah, yeah. And, so the Cypriot were... FA. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've been uh, we've been uh, it, we've it's been it's been very well reported about us. Not we've been very vocal about them. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. We we yeah about the fact that they aren't the ones that contact the players. It seems to be the other way around, which is mm. very disappointing. Yeah. We we we're, we're saying that you're not saying that. So I'm just I'm, I'm just saying that for anybody listening, we're saying that. <laughs> yeah, it's very right. disappointing that you had to contact them rather than yeah, the other yeah. way around. But but yeah, it's 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 the good thing is you've contacted them, so the the ball is rolling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the the main yeah. I kind of because I saw um, to be fair, I think Max, so Max, Max, uh, Max Delifer, who's who's at Watford. He's he's a couple of years above me. He he was he so he was playing for Potter's Bar. So he wasn't even playing at Watford. And he got he got um, I think it's through his agent. He got a call from um, from the the the, the football association there. Um, whereas yeah, for me, I was kind of waiting and I have I didn't really get anything. And they were like. Um, yeah, sort of, you know, some separate articles and things like that. Um, and I kind of, I was really eager to, to, to kind of play for them. And so I kind of, I took, yeah, took things into my hands and I contacted them and they, they kind of just said to me, um, you need, yeah, you need, you need, um, like a separate passport ID card in order to, to play. And so I kind of, yeah, I asked my parents, you know, can we go to Cyprus? And obviously I wasn't allowed to go in the middle of the season, understandably. So I wanted to, to try and play for them for the, um, the, the Euro like um, under seventeen qualifiers and things like that. Yeah. Which unfortunately, yeah. they didn't get they didn't get in, get into the um, the Euros um, for that. But um, I really wanted to play for that. But obviously, I, I wasn't allowed time off. So I'm hoping for this for the next season, the 23, 24 season, I'll be able to to play for them, go to some camps um, um, and things like that. That's interesting because uh, you know you having to contact the Cypriot FA for me, I think it just shows probably their lack of understanding uh, as to how many Cypriots in the UK can qualify to play for the national team. Mm. You know, you live in North London, I'm sure you know about Omonia Youth, which is a, yep. one of the best grassroots club. Um, yep. You know, so many Cypriot players. I mean, even at Leighton Orient, we've got Gibriano, we've got Sodiril, we've yep. got Georgiou, and there's there's loads of Cypriot players, but they don't seem to get a, a look in when it comes to the national team. And you know, we're hoping to get Giorgio Khan, who plays for Fulham, whose dad played mm. for the Cypriot national team. Um, but it's a it's a strange it's a strange kind of sub because if you look at the under twenty ones, I'm sure Thassel can attest to this. The under twenty ones have got a lot of Cypriot players that are based outside of of the the Cypriot mm. uh, league. But the the first team, most of them are, are are within the Cypriot league, so it's a bit of a strange one. Mm. It's it 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 swings and roundabouts. But um, the, the 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 good thing is again the positive thing for you is that uh, the process is started and yeah. uh you know this can't wait to see you see you in that number one shirt kick joel Hopefully. mal out of there. kick joel mal out of there leave joel alone he's our friend <laughs> <laughs> leave him alone but in terms of, the other question i need to ask though is um obviously the you know your, your italian side of the family that I, I assume they're passionate about football you know and mm. um how, how did your dad or your family feel when you said look i, I want to give cyprus uh, a shot you know, I think I think that, that they're supportive. I think, like at the end of the day, they, like I said, Cyprus in terms of you know, I've been to Cyprus, you know, probably three three times, twice as many times as I've been to Italy. Um, you know, I, like I said, I have family in Italy. I feel really close and connected to to my Italian side. But um, like I said, in terms of at, at the moment, I feel like the the best, yeah, the best thing would be to to go and play for Cyprus. And I think, um, like I said, with, with all my family there, it only kind of seems right. And like I said, kind of going from a young a young age and being able to actually, you know country that that I've also um that you know that's so a part of me I feel like um it would only be 
I mean, the, for me, in terms of the decision, yeah, the decision to play for Cyprus, I think, it, yeah, it wasn't necessarily a hard one. Like I said, I was, I'm kind of, I'm close and I'm connected with my Italian side, but I think going from literally, you know, Cyprus being kind of my second home, going there for two months, literally two months every year in the summer, going there for six weeks every every single year, I think it's it's it's, it's hard not to want to play for them. And I, I feel like my my family there and um, you know, big football fans. Um, um, big Aboel fans, if, they, if that's uh, I don't know if, that, if that's good oh, for you or not. No. Um, I'm gonna cut you off now. <laughs> yes, it's very good, it's very, very good. No problem at all for me. <laughs> um, so, um, so yeah, and I have, um, yeah, I have, I have family there who are big football fans, so I think, like I said, it would only be it would only be right if I if I went and played for them. And like I said, I'm hoping that. I can't, I'm not kind of expect. so I have obviously with all the paperwork and, and, and getting the documents through to, to be able to play for them. I'm hoping obviously they uh, they don't ignore that and the, the, the Football Association give me a chance because um, um, I'm hoping, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping, um, you know, that they can do that. But like I said, I think I've got to put forward what, what I can offer and I hope they, you know, they give the opportunity because I think it's, it's for me representing, you know, Cyprus is, you know, a huge opportunity. Don't worry, we'll get we'll get on their backs. We will get on their backs. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, we'll and uh, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll get you on that team. <laughs> Let's hope well, so. mate, I've, 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 I'm done with my questions, quizzing you and everything. I appreciate your time. You know, it's um, it's, no it's a pleasure to have you on. It's it's great talking to you, and I, I really wish you the best. Honestly, it's, Thank it's you. great to have someone from the UK wanting to play for for the Cypriot national team. And uh, yeah, thank you again. That's all. Anything else, my friend? No, no, no. I mean, the only thing I wanted to ask was uh, with kind of like separate goalkeepers. If you've got, if you, if you uh, know of any, or if you uh, remember any from younger or people talking to you about them. No, no, not really. Like I said, I kind of, I think living in North London, I have to like with with my family here. I guess they haven't, they haven't, they're not huge Cypri fans. They're growing up. I've been watching more English football, but, but like I said, the one, the one. Um, that I'm kind of looking at, like I said, because he's a family friend. I know him personally with Dimitris at um, at Lanaka. Um, he's he's played the under 18s or under 19s, I think, in in Cyprus. So it's if I do go, I like I said, I'm going tomorrow. So I'm hoping I can maybe see him, have a conversation with him, because he, he's he's doing what exactly what I'm doing um, in terms of or, or wanted to with with playing with the national team. So um, he's someone that I, I, I've kind of um, you know looked to, and um, you know I'm quite close to him as well. So hopefully. I've seen it in the next few days and can I have a conversation about that? Nice one. Nice one. Fantastic. Well, mate, Galon Daxidi, as we say, enjoy your, your you. journey. Enjoy your trip. Um, I'm sure you're gonna, you. in, you're going to have a great time out in Cyprus. And for all Thank we you. know, tomorrow morning, you're going to have a whole heap of people at the airport wanting you to sign their autographs. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, boys and girls, it's been another edition of This Is Mappa. Thank you to our sponsor, Project 357 and Inspire Sports Management. We'll be back very, very soon because we have another two interviews scheduled for the next few days. So the content keeps on coming. Thank you very much.